This one looks pretty good, Brett. And when it's time to go on a mission like this in the early season, there's always one dude I can rely on. Bit, bit. Do you have a decent sized hook on there, Brett? Ah, uh, yeah. 12 hours on the water, you know. One of my favorite fisheries, the permit fishery down here. Oh, got it, rough. Kill it. Kill it. God, it looked right at that crowd. There you go. There we go, baby. Come on, set that hook. That one. There we go. Yeah. Oh, there he is. We're going to throw ball. Do it. What's up? My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the Just world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Maltz. I got you, what you saying? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the free on the pontoon. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. That's the one. He's not superstitious, because that's bad luck. Woo! All right, get with him, come with him. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. Our fishery here in California is, you know, different than a lot of places and that it is very seasonal. And in my mind, the thing that really kicks off our fishing season is the Fred Hall Show. You know, everybody comes out in Southern California to the Fred Hall Show get deals on gear, meet all the local fishing celebs, go to seminars, really meet the people in the industry. And that to me is a kickoff point. As soon as Fred Hall kind of rolls around, then our real pelagic fish start biting. You got the yellowtail showing up, the tuna, and especially in recent years with this influx of bluefin that we've had. So I think the program is gonna be, let's run out there. We know where the fish are at, they're just not eating real well. We're taking a lot of chum, and we're just gonna sit on them. I mean, remember, it's May. We used to not even uh, think about doing this This is kind ridiculous, of stuff. even talking about tuna fishing right now. I know. So, for me, I've got basically a Rolodex of a dozen guys who I like to fish with, you know, who get the program and know what they're doing because they are willing to take that chance. They are real fishermen, and they don't mind going out with a probability of striking out. Here's your chariot. Woohoo! Oh my God. This thing is unbelievable. No, I'm definitely covetous. I am definitely gonna be miserable and unhappy and bitter the entire day. That sounds like a good day to me already. Set the perfect tone. And when it's time to go on a mission like this in the early season with a high probability of striking out, there's always one dude I can rely on. He's always down to go fishing, got a great attitude, knows my program, doesn't mind getting yelled at from time to time, and that guy is Brett. Super helpful on the boat and a hell of a fisherman. This thing's awesome, man. Everything's pretty much ready to go. Let's fire this up and get off the dock. Let's do it, man. You know, this time of year with the fishing being so spotty and fuel here in California sort of being at a record high, we can't waste a lot of time going searching like maybe we did in the old days. So when that happens, you know, kind of, you kind of got to gear yourself up, take advantage of that network of buddies. Um, we have a service fish dope that'll kind of tell you what's going on day to day when the fish are going to be here. And then also our website, BD Outdoors, you know, we can get on the forums and we can kind of see what's going on. And all that information together gives you a real good synopsis to help you assemble a game plan for hopefully a successful day of fishing at a time when fishing's definitely not easy. I love this time of year, you know, this is like, I'm done traveling for a little bit, now it's time to enjoy home. And you're so amped up because you've been cooped up all winter, like this trip. We may strike out, we may hit gold. There's some big tuna out there, you know, there's some yellowtail around. But dude, it's just great to be back on the water. So my plan was, was to kind of work my way down towards the tuna zone and look for yellowtail, look for kelp patties, hopefully run into a tuna. But along the way, you know, keep an eyes open, try to put a few yellows on the boat. There's a giant mola mola here and a bunch of bait. All right, Brad, normal program here. I'm gonna get above it. Okay. Throw a little bit of chum and then you go ahead and soak a bait and see if we can find a yellowtail. Okay. You know, the first real pelagic visitor that we get in our water every year, year in, year out, is gonna be those California yellowtail coming up the coast from Baja and sort of flooding our grounds. Feed them right there, Brett. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I can't see your bait now. Yeah, he had three little yellows right on his back. Oh, see the yellows? Right on his head. Right in front of his head like cobia. I've never seen that. Plenty of bait. Yeah, we get two bodies of, of yellowtail that'll kind of show up, and they show up about the same time. 
The first ones tend to come up the beach and they're close to land, you know, they're near the islands, they're eating krill. And a lot of times when they're on that krill, they're real hard to switch over to get them to eat an iron, to eat a mad scad or a sardine even. And then we have a whole nother body of fish that comes up offshore. This one looks pretty good, Brett. Let's go ahead and pull those trawlers in. Got Let's it. Throw a bait. Give it a try. Oh no, there they are, whole mess of yellows. Good sized fish too. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks really good. Whole bunch of fish. They're right here. They're swimming all around the boat. You should, they should find that bait. You want me to throw more? Yeah, go ahead, throw a hair more. Oh, I'm on. There you go. Finally. You are good. You, sir, are good. It's coming your way, Brad. Yep, I got gotcha. you. You want me to swing it for you? Oh, don't go there. Dumped them. Lost them. Lost them. <sighs> Straight pulled the hook. That was a decent fish, like 10 pounds. There's plenty of them. We're going to milk this kelp for everything it's got. You are good. Local knowledge is brought to you by Evinroot, fastest, cleanest, smartest. The only outboard that lets you have it all. Pen, let the battle begin. Yeti, built for the wild. Seakeeper, once you feel it, you will never boat without it. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Nomad design. Crafted by experience and by BDOutdoors.com. I don't see anything, do you? No. Throw a couple couple passes, I mean. Nice kelp anyway. Yeah, shock it's not holding. Last couple weeks, it's been like, gotta go through five to find one. You know, it's still a little early. You know, in the spring, my fishery's just jumping off and we're fired up and ready to go. And then on my other coast in Florida, where I like to fish a lot, you know, Rushy's kind of winding down. The, the wahoo are gone, sailfish is slowing down. It's permit time for him. What you got there, bro? I got some pretty little silver dollars here. Nice. They've been hard to come by lately too. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad we were able to find a few. Sweet. Hermit sushi. Oh yeah. Spring is a very special time of year here in the Keys. Uh, it means a lot of different things. A lot of different species are gonna start moving around. You know, for other people like Ali, you know, it could mean different trade shows, different meetings. But for us down here, for me as a guide, it really is the fishing. Hi right, buddy. Let's do Get it. Out of here, man. Can't wait. What a beautiful day in the Florida Keys, brother. When's the last time you went out on just a play day? Oh man, you know, it's been a while. If you've fished in Key West or no Key West fishing, you've heard of Tony Murphy. Tony Murphy was a guide for a number of years, fished alongside of me for 20 years out of Murray Marina. One of the best in the business. He's kind of gotten away from the guiding as much as he used to. He still does it a little bit, but he's ventured out into the saltwater angler, which is a outfitter out of Key West, Florida. Just like me, Tony still loves to fish, loves it. I had the day off. Tony was able to schedule a day off from the shop, and we decided we were gonna go chase some of our favorite fish, the permit. See something, bro? Well, we're just coming over the wreck right now. So I'm starting to mark some fish right there. There's some fish on there now, huh? Yeah, you know, this wreck's got some relief on it and it holds some fish. You can see the wreck on the side scan. The permit are here, you know. They were here. We just had that little blow the other day. The Gulf of Mexico is a very vast desert-like area. There's nothing in it unless it was put there sunk, it's just flat. 
the only structure you're gonna find out there, for the most part, is gonna be a lot of the old shrimp boats. There's some old Air Force towers that are still up out there, and those are creating the structure. These fish are gonna congregate around the structure because that's the only thing out there for them to congregate around. See him flash up. There he is. Good job, Tony. Let's see if it's job. the right species here. Now, if he goes to get you back in the wreck, I'm going to back down on him a little bit, all okay. right? Let me keep him up high. Nice. Ah! Oh. Ah! <laughs> Pull the hook, brother. That's part of the Man, game. I feel like I had him solid, too. That is part of the game. Well, we know, we know there's one here. Yep. And you know how they are out here. They're not usually little guys. He was pulling. Pulling some string? Yeah. For us, you know, we're, we're looking to do numbers. We're looking to catch multiple fish in a day, and we're, we're also looking to catch these fish on different tackle, whether it be fly, whether it be artificial, or whether it just be a plain old crab and a jig head. Nice little wiggler. Well, at least we know if we see them, they're going to eat. Yeah. Yeah, they had no problem there. Get a bite. There he is. There Get him, go. Tony. Oh, yeah. oh, maybe not. Oh, oh, my God. What is going on? Amateur hour. I can't even get a bite, so. As soon as you feel that, that fish eat the crab, you have to set the hook immediately. Got one. Yeah, baby. Oh my God, I pulled the hook. No, you gotta be kidding me. Dude, what the, is the deal? What that fish is doing is crushing the crab and he's gonna spit that crab or that jig out as soon as he feels it because he's gonna know something's not right. So as soon as you feel that fish pick up that crab, it's time to set the hook. Oh, got it rough, kill it, kill it. Big school, bro. Big school? Yeah. Where are they at? Straight. Right there. Right here. Oh. Right here as well. Let's double up right here, brother. Come on. They're going right under the boat right now. Big school, like right under the boat. There's like 50 fish here. God, it looked right at that crab. There you go. There yeah, we go, baby. Come on, Keep set that hook. That one. There we go. There we go. Woo. Stay hooked, baby. Stay hooked. There's another school right over here. God, it's pretty out here once that sun comes up. <laughs> it makes it prettier when you're catching fish, too. Yeah. Oh, there he is. We're going to tumble. That'll do it. What's up? Now who's going to land your fish? You capable? Oh, I guess we could try the net. I, I, I've never netted a permit. You know, that'd be a first time for me. This one just figured out he was hooked. Come on. Come on, baby. Come right up here. Should be seeing some we're color we're here. We're about to make second. you famous. You look like you got a. I got a hog. You got a silver dollar there, son. Got fish with them, too. I know, they're following. Swimming out with them. One of my favorite fisheries is the permit fishery down here. It's a great fish on light tackle. It's a great fish on a little heavier tackle. Look at that. Beautiful fish, Rush. I got, I got your baby brother. They're really good fighters. It's a great fish for novices. It's a great fish for the seasoned veteran. Oh, that's the shot. God's day off. God's day off, perfect. <laughs> These fish are congregating big schools, and a lot of times you're not just gonna get one shot. Oh, this, this guy's ready to roll. All right, there you go. Look at him swim away like nothing. The Gulf of Mexico is very vast. There's no landmarks once you're way out there. What you will see though, a lot of times, is shrimp boats. That presents another opportunity, and it's a whole nother fishery out there. I'm gonna say this is a little black fin. I saw it eat, it looked very bonita-ish. All right. I saw it you're eat. buying the first beer if I'm, what, if the, I'm the winner. I feel these years of experience, you know, cool my fish, you know? 
I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm going Bonita. Okay. I, I mean, if it's a Bonita, I get a $500 voucher at the saltwater. Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I see some yellow there, bro. Oh my God. I can't, I am, oh, I am gonna buy you a white ball. Oh man. It's a tuna. Damn, look you at are, that pretty you are, fish. You are a professional. <laughs> a true professional. Yo! Yeah. That's a chunky one. What? Look that at that. That is a chunky one. Beautiful, baby. Look at that purple. Good job, Tony. Thanks, bro. I'm gonna bring you fishing more often. Yeah. Call it a day. Sounds great, man. You're marking them? Oh, yeah, yeah, they are. We got them. Steady stream it. Over the last few years, you know, we've had this epic run of bluefin here that hasn't happened in 100 years. So, you know, where we would always wait till June and July and go look for yellowfin tuna or albacore tuna, we've got these bluefin making appearances in January. Now, granted, there's not a ton of them, but by early spring, they're here and they're here in numbers. Oh, off the bow, off the oh. bow! Oh, oh get up! Oh. oh! So sick! Oh, right there, right there, coming out of the water. Piles of fish, jugged under the boat right now. You know, to sort of compound things with these early tuna, they can be very finicky. And when they get finicky like that, you go to a lighter line, you know, we're down to like 30, 40 pound liter in order to get a bite, and then you're gonna use a smaller hook. Now you've got a late bite, you've got light line, and you've got big fish. You can imagine how some of these bites that we get into turn into very long nights. Bit, bit. Come on. Still there? Yep. Go. We're tight. Yes. Good one. Nice work, dude. Local Knowledge is brought to you by CV Boats, Lead the Way, Costa, See What's Out There, Mustad, The Standard in Saltwater, Aftco, Any Fish, Any Water, Sea Deck, Your Boat Deserves Sea Deck, JL Audio, How We Play, Casa Vieja Lodge, Experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. The Saltwater Angler, Key West. And by Taco Marine. Oh, they're under us now, 200. Yeah, you marking them again? Yep. Do you have a decent sized hook on there, Brett? Ah, uh, yeah. That rod's just like whoop, yeah. whoop. It's a good fish, man. No, it is for sure. Could be a minute. You getting anywhere, or is it just straight stalemate? It's just straight stalemate. This time of year, it's really easy to be a hero or a zero. And in the case of these bluefin, biting late in the day, we're using lighter line, we've already been fishing since 6 a.m., we hooked that fish at 6 p.m. 12 hours on the water, you know. You're not back to the dock until 10 o'clock at night. It takes a special kind of guy who's willing to sign up for a trip like that. Remember how I said I was cold before and I wanted a sweatshirt? That was stupid. I feel like I get an inch, he takes, you know, two, but wear them out, man. Well, well, you know this game. Where's your line going now? Still back? Yeah, just slightly back and straight up and down, basically. 50 coming, feet. Coming back on you. Huh? Coming back. I'm just trying to set the boat in the trough so we drift away from him. No, that makes sense. He's coming up. Yeah, he's starting to come a little bit. Color! Color? Yep. Oh, wow. You're going to have to walk him back to the side for me to get a good stab at him. All right. Well, and yeah, because up here, I'm going to have to get him right on the surface. See him? Yeah, we got him. Give him one more. You're so close, dude. Come, Let him come around one more time and stand up for me a little. No, no, no. Keep... I got a mid fillet, but he's gaffed. Got him? Oh, get another gaff. Get another gaff. I got him broadside. Okay. He ain't going anywhere, but hurry. I'm going. There, oh, whoa, whoa, get him in the head. In the head, buddy. On the belly's fine. Okay. Right. Now we're good. One, One two, three. Yeah. Come on in! Yeah! yeah! 
Nice work, dude. Nice work, man. That's a legit fish, it brother. Is, dude. 12 hours of work, man, finally. <sighs> when you can connect on that first bluefin tuna of the year, there's no greater reward. It's just a blast. I look forward to it every year, and it's just the kickoff of many, many more months of fun. <laughs> That's what we came for, huh? Damn right, man, 12 hours of work. Looking all day, didn't see a thing. Finally found him right before dark and... Can't catch a three pound yellowtail, but we were stalling all day. Waiting for this. Hoping to meet up with this guy. Bluefin tuna, baby. I love it when a plan comes Especially together. Especially in a May, man. I know, it's May crazy. bluefin tuna. Everything looks like it's setting up like the prior years. You know, I see another long summer and fall of us really beating up these giant trophy fish right here in our backyard.